Hi guys, it's Martin here from Astronics and in today's video I'm going to show you how to repair a very common Bosch starter which is fitted in a lot of vehicles manufactured from about 1999 to these days and um, these starters are so called Bosch Mountain Series and they can be fitted in absolutely anything now so let's move on and see how it's done now guys, this is the starter I'm going to use as an example to show you how to diagnose the problem and how to solve it. Now this starter is a very popular 1.9 turbo diesel Volkswagen and Audi engine starter. Um, it's manufactured by Bosch and that's what we are going to focus on today. Now the reason I'm showing you how to do this job and why to do it is because uh, most of the time it's the brush box what's the problem. It's very simple to change it and often enough it can save you a lot of money. Now, first of all, as you can see, this starter is held by two lugs here, but them starters, they could be different shapes of the, of the drivings here, there could be different pinions. Some of them might have a nose on them. Long as this starter is 110 series or 124 series, this video will show you how to complete the job. Now, we'll start off with identifying, is our starter the starter in the video? Now guys, if you have a good look around you, the body of your starter, what you will notice on it that it says here it says Bosch now first of all you have to make sure it's a Bosch starter now other thing is here we have numbers now Bosch starters numbers always start from 0, 0, 0, 1 now this is the starter code if it's a starter and made by Bosch it will always have 001 now next thing is here 1, 2, 5 that is the series of the starter and this is the most important part if your starter is 1, 2, 5 or 1, 1, 0 series this video and the brush box featured in, featured in this video is going to do the job now after you have another three numbers um, which are kind of irrelevant it's just basically the model of the starter um, whatever it fits it could be a Volkswagen, it could be an Audi, it could be a Peugeot, Toyota, it could be anything the middle section is the most important the 125 or 110 so have a good look and find them numbers and make sure it's 125 or 110 now guys if the problem in the vehicle is that when you turn the ignition switch absolutely nothing happens um, it's more than likely problem with the brushes now it's easy very easy to check it now we get our positive lead which is the one here attach it to the top connection on the starter and we have our small lead which is a power as well and we're going to feed the power onto the plug which is basically the signal from the ignition switch we're going to imitate what happens in the vehicle and as we touch the little connection in the plug all what we get is a tiny little spark and absolutely nothing happens beside it and the same symptoms will, will, will happen in the car basically you turn the ignition switch and there's zero sound coming out of it now guys the other thing we can do is we can just get our power here and feed it onto the main wire coming out of the body of the starter which is basically this one go and join it with the solenoid and if we feed the power to it, all what we get is mentioned spark. We have a hard spark here and we have a spark here. That means the brushes inside of the starter have lost contact with the armature. Now guys, um, the first step to do is we just have to remove the wire there, the main one, going from the solenoid to the body of the starter. And it's usually held by 13 nut. And the next thing to do is to remove two main through out poles one here and one on the opposite side uh, they are sevens we get them removed and we then we can pull off the body of the starter now guys we have our wire removed here and we have our two through out poles removed now all we have to do is jiggle the wire jiggle the jiggle the body of the starter and simply pull it up now the only important thing is don't take them two Phillips screws before you remove the body now take the body off, you can put it away and this is the remaining of our starter which is simply just the gear as you can see if you pull that cap off inside you have the three spider gears and you have the bush in the middle when you're going to be assembled the starter back again you might put few drops of oil there make sure it's nicely lubricated because they do dry out now guys, what we are after is the body of the starter because that's where the brushes are situated now all we have to do is 
this is our armature here. We just have to push out the shaft of the armature. Now sometimes you might need a little tap, but do never, do not never ha tap that with the hammer. Use the use the butt of the screwdriver or something plastic or plastic or timber. Never never steal because it's just going to destroy the shaft which runs in the bushing. Now just push it out. And there's always going to be a bit of a force holding it because the magnets are holding the, the armature with the brush box. And you can just simply grab the back cover and pull it out. And this is our armature with the brush box. Now this, you can wash it out with, with, with diesel or petrol or whatever you want to use. Now don't pull out the magnets because they are simply just shoving out. Never do that because for a simple reason because if you change the polarity the starter will turn the wrong way and it won't start. <laughs> simple as that. Now when we have this removed the next step is to remove them two Phillips screws and pull off the cap. So we're just going to do that. Now guys, we have our cap removed. Now if you look in here, what you have is you have a little circlip slides in and out, a little slot in the armature there. Just take that out, put it away. Now there's a shim there. Want to keep that safe as well. And there's little paper paper seal there. It usually it stays on the cap there. There's no need to remove that. Now we pull off our cap. And as you say, as you see, inside we have a bushing which we're going to replace as well. And this is our brush box. Now guys simple way of checking are the brushes the problem is just simply pull off the brush box and as you see the brushes haven't come out they are kind of a flat and on top of that one of them brushes here it have borne off just a piece of wire sticking out now them little them little cages holding the brushes they're just simply sliding onto the brush box they are kind of loose on them and the brushes are the problem because as you can see here there's absolutely nothing left of them especially the, the two positive ones here so that's what we have to replace now before we go on to replace the brush box have a look at the armature first and see in what shape it is now guys this is our armature and as you see the commutator here is pretty dirty and it's it have been marked badly from the from the brushes but if you have a good look around here and have a look at the each segment and if you don't see a big chunk missing off the segment or big born signs it means it's usable again now all what you have to do is you have to clean the grooves in between the segments now the best thing I find is it's just a simple hacksaw blade and all what you do is just simply put in the groove and give it a few strokes now you don't have to go too hard because mainly what's in the groove is just a bit of a dust and dirt now after you have this done get this fine sandpaper and roll it around the commutator just to see it shiny you don't have to take anything off just rub it off to make it shiny and that's what we are going to do now now guys we have our strip of sandpaper here and all we have to do is just simply put it onto our commutator and just give it a few rubs until we see it shiny. We do the same thing all around just to make sure it's nice and shiny all around. Now guys, our commentator is cleaned and as you can see here we have a new brush box. They come with little bush and plastic bush in there so it's going to be very easy to fit it. Now other thing as well when you're getting one of them is that th them brush boxes they come in two different types there's one which is for the clockwise rotation starters and other one for the anti-clockwise rotation starters now um you can get them universal basically the only difference is that this rubber grommet which slides into this slot in the body is either on right or left side of them two holes now you can get them you can get them as I said you can get them universal and this one is universal as you can see it's on the soft lead and I can slide it up and down and that is the best option if you're not sure if your one is for the clockwise rotation starter or anti-clockwise rotation starter this brush box is the best to get now we can get 
we can get on and fit the approach box. Simply what, you, what we have to do is just put it down on the shaft. There's a hole in the bushing, so the shaft fits through it. And just slide it down. And our approach box is fitted onto the commuter. Now let's move on and I'm going to show you how to change the bushing in the plate. Now in them starters and 110 series, 125 series and many other ones, which are many other ones of them types, this bushing is standard. So I'm going to show you how to replace it. Now guys, the first thing we have to do is we have to knock out the bushing, which I'm just going to simply use the torchy socket. Now you don't have to use the socket, you can just make, just make sure that this the bushing is going to be coming out that end and have a clearance there so it can come out. Pull it down. We have our seven socket I'm going to use to knock it out. Try to use a small a small tool as possible so I won't damage the out, outer shell of the bushing. Place it down where the bushing is and give it a few taps with the hammer. Now our bushing is out as you can see. I have it here and now just give this tiny rope with the cloth and we're going to knock new bushing into it now guys this is our new bushing nice and shiny as you can see just place the plate down in whatever you use to fit it and get your bushing now important thing to do is to remember is that when you're tapping the bushing in always tap it in from the tapered side of the element now you see this side is sharp where this there's no sharp edge there it's tapered so that's the most important thing fitting the bushing in now guys and now we are going to tap the bushing inside now the important thing is use a short screwdriver or something plastic try not to tap the bushing with the steel socket or a hammer directly because it's just going to destroy it so simply slide that down and we're just going to give it a few taps. And as you see, our bushing is in. Now the other important thing is to remember that we nearly want this bushing to be leveled with the surface of the cap. To level the bushing, the simplest way of doing it is just simply take your old bushing, leave it on top of the old of the new one, and just give it a tap with the hammer. And now if you have a look, it's nice and even surface. The bushing has leveled with the steel piece there. Now, after this is done, it's time to fit our cap onto the armature. Now guys, we're going to fit our plate. Um, just give it a, maybe a drop of oil inside. Make sure it spreads nice and even in the bushing. Now take your plate, and as you can see, you have a little piece sticking out here. This piece is basically for this rubber grommet. So what you do is just simply level this and slide it down. Now as you can see the grommet sits in nicely and our two holes at the back of the cap are going in nicely with the threads in the brush box. And that's basically what we want. Now the next step is to fit our shim back into it. Now shim is in and as you can see there's a groove in the armature there. So we simply take our circlip and just slide into the groove. Now after that is done you can give the, the, the shaft a few drops of oil, not too much. And the next thing to do is just put our cap in, slide it down and tighten the two Phillips screws. Now guys, our Phillips screws are tightened and you can't detach the brush box from the armature anymore. Now, the next step is to fit the armature into the body. Just make sure this grommet sits comfortably on the bottom there of the cab. Now, get your body, line your opening here with the grommet and just simply slide it in. The magnets are always going to pull it in and make sure the grommet fits within the slot here. Just push it down and we have our motor reassembled. All we have to do now 
I just put it down on the starter and tightened our two throughout. Now guys, we are going to assemble it now. As I said before, just give it a few drops of oil inside there. Now, fit near motor. There's a little cut there. And there is a rubber grommet which you possibly won't be able to see because it's deep within the starter, it's there. But this cut will always fit within the grommet there. So just simply slide the starter down. It came down quite easily. And after that, put your two bolts inside and tighten them nice and tight. Now guys, our motor is tight onto the body of the starter and the last step is to put our lead back onto the connection there of the solenoid. And after we have this tightened, it's time to test it. Now guys, the starter is mounted on the device, the device is connected to the negative of the battery. This is our positive lead, and this basically goes to this little connection there to the plug. This is going to this basically going to feed the solenoid. Now, moment of truth. As we can see, our starter is flying. The pin comes out, starter spins, everything is perfect. And after putting it into the vehicle, it's going to work perfect. Now guys, that'll be it. As you can see, our starter is rocking again. And it was a simple and quick job. It cost nearly nothing. And the starter is going to be perfect again. Um, if you like our video, please like it below and subscribe to our channel as there's going to be much more videos coming out in the near future. Thanks for watching.